Hi guys, in the last video we built the socket controller. In this video I will build and simulate the SPI master and slave machines. I did a detailed video on this in my channel, so I'll just run through this design to have a master and slave for our design. The SPI operation is very simple. We just need to configure the master clock divider, set data in for the master and the slave, start the master, wait for the transaction to end, both the master and the slave. We monitor the busy bit of both machines and read data out for both master and slave. In the simulation, we will set the configuration in advanced, we'll generate the start signal, and we see the data transferred from the master to the slave and back. In the real design, all of this will be done by the CPU. The CPU will configure all our configuration, give the master the start, monitor the both busy bits and once the transaction has ended they will read the data out i'll start by adding a sort a master file create a file now i'm using vhdl not very log we'll give it a name spi master and we'll leave it in the project. Again, this is shown in more details in my other video, so I'm just run through this. We have a counter here, so we need the unsigned library. We have ports. For an SPI, we actually need three. We need three data. Clock div start and data in we indicate with the busy showing that the spi is working and the data out and the four spi signals next we'll use the signals in the architect we have our clock divider counter we have the spi clock a pulse, a posage bit and negage bit, I'll explain in a minute. An SPI bit counter and the three registers needed for the SPI itself. Now I'll copy the code. Okay. Save it. Now here we have the code for the SPI in VHDL. As you can see, we have it here a clock counter and the clock generated by the clock counter. We have two signals indicating a posage in the SPI clock and the negage with the SPI clock. We have the start. Everything here is synchronized to the start signal we'll have the register for the ss underscore n for the mossy and we have a shift register to get the miso this is all explained in my other video here i just want to show you that we need three parameters from the sock which is the clock divider the data in and the start 
and we have two output signals for the registers which is the busy and the data out so now we have our SPI master we need our SPI slave we'll generate another file we'll call it SPI slave Again, we need the unsigned library. We we'll need the ports. Here we have only the data in the busy and the data out. We don't need the clock, it is slave here. We have the signals for the SPI and here they are input and we only generate the MISO. Next, in the architect section, first we need the signals. We need a new clock divider to detect this time the S clock rise and fall and we have a positive and a negative and we have the registers to get the, the MOSI and to generate the missile and here is the code for our SPI we have here a clock detection that detect the positive and the negative on each negative we generate a new missile and on each positive we detect the, the missile the MOSI and we output the MISO and we output the BUSY and the MOSI register so we have our master and slave after we have the master and the slave we just want to see that they are working for themselves so we'll make a simulation we'll add a simulation source this is the SPI simulation again HDL and this is a test bench so we don't need any ports We need the master and the slave component in the architect section. We need the signals. Now we need to generate the reset and the clock. The clock divide, we set it four this will be done by the cpu but we talk about this later on the start we have to generate the that the master data in we set in front and the slave data in we need the busy and the data output for the master the busy and the data output for the slave and the four spi signals now We'll generate a clock. Next, we'll generate the reset and the start bit. And we'll insert the SPI master and slave. Now, as you can see we have the in the master we have the clock divider and the start in the slave we don't the rest are the same
and we are ready to simulate. We'll set this as top simulation. And we'll run simulation. The default for the simulation is just 1000 nanosecond, which is too small, so we increase this and we'll let it run some more and now we can see our SPI is working we set the clock divider to 4 in the beginning we have the data in and the data in for the master and in for the slave this will be done by the CPU in the real system here we, we de define those in advanced and we give the start signal that again will be derived from the CPU. We see our SPI working and we see the results that the data received by the master is the data sent by the slave and the data received by the slave is the data sent by the master. So our SPI is working. I will have all the files in my GitHub written below and we will start building the register file in the next video.